Okay, Saturday in the Park. A uh, little disclaimer first that I'm going to assume people watching this have kind of heard the song before and, and kind of know the basic form and like just the basic piano rhythms at the part where it's pretty obvious. Um, and then as far as the chords, I'm going to say the chord names, uh, but if you don't know what that means, you can look at my hands and if I go too quick, just pause the video, rewind 10 seconds, whatever. But uh, anyways, let's just get right into it. So it starts with that famous riff. So he's doing A minor 7 to a D9 to, I would call this a D minor 9 with a G in the bass. So if you D in the bass, it would be, but you instead you G in the bass. It sounds kind of nice. And then it resolves to a C. So the, the left hand is doing just quarter notes on the bass note, so... right hand you basically start with this figure and then the only thing that changes is your thumb descends and you alternate between the E and the D with your pinky and ring finger so it's like and then C so one more time oh and another thing is the the syncopation is probably the trickiest part of getting this down. The the chords come in on the and of four. And so on. And uh maybe one other thing to add about this intro is maybe it's just me, but it sounds like Robert Lamb kind of picks with his thumb like kind of does this funky thing with the chord where it's like kind of almost like alternating there maybe that's just me but that's something i hear so the next is the verse and i don't think he uses the sustain pedal at all in this song so uh if you want to that's fine but this slower part i don't sustain so I'll split the verse into two parts. This is the first part. So we just ended it, the can you dig it, yes I can part. And so the first chord is a B minor 7, then to an E minor 7. The next chord is, it's either a D major 7 or a D major 9. It doesn't really make a big difference, but I, I usually do the 9. So the 9 is your E. Alternate. This next part is the singing Italian songs. Alternating between C and G while your uh, left hand descends. And, and by the way, for the most part in this song, I use octaves. Uh, the intro, I just use one hand because it, it sounds a little too boomy if you do it with uh, octaves. But for the verse, I usually just use octaves. So anyways... Uh, where was I? Going back to singing Italian songs. You're just descending, and then you go to a G or a D when that's done. D. And then this this next part where he like says nonsense lyrics. I don't even know what he's saying. Uh, you you keep G in the bass the whole time, and then in your uh, right hand you're gonna do G to, uh, I think this is a G sus 7 chord. It sounds a lot to me like you can hear the F and the C in this. So I think that's the chord. Then to C, then to G. So I'll play that. To the, back to A minor 7, or, 
Well, this is the second part. Let me get into the second part of the verse now, which goes like this. <laughs> start on A minor 7, the same one you did at the beginning of the song, and then go to D9, the same one from the beginning of the song, and then he kind of, I think he kind of syncopates it at the end to get into that G. Uh, so this part, it it's basically just G to C, a 5-1 thing. But what he does, I think, is adds a little kind of melody in the the right hand that I try to incorporate. And I don't know if anybody else hears this, but it sounds like he hits the A kind of real quick, um, just like a... goes back to the intro so then the next important part about this song to talk about is the bridge where it gets swung a part of the slow motion uh. so that part I'm gonna play it first basically three pairs of chords. Uh, the first pair, you keep C in the bass and you go between G minor 7 and a C7. And you kind of want to give it like a just a nice swing light feeling. For as light as rock and roll can be. Then you want to go to B flat minor 7 with an E flat in the bass. And then that'll go to an E flat dominant 7. And then the last pair of chords, G in the bass, and you want to do D minor 7 to G dominant 7. And then when you hit the last G7, it just goes right back into that intro. But I like to, um, sometimes I like to go chromatically at the end, like. I don't know, just my taste. Uh, another, something worth noting about the intro riff this time after that swung part is he does this cool little thing where he goes uh so what he's doing is going c major d minor you keep seeing the bass the whole time and then to which you could either see that as like a c minor seven or like e flat major slash c whatever um but i just like it it's, it kind of almost is like bluesy here is the outro which if you want to simplify it it's literally just g for a couple bars and then c for a couple bars but what he's doing is while he's keeping in the first part g on the bass he's alternating between uh, g and c in the right hand and then when he goes to c the c chord he's alternating between g and c there so so it sounds like So just one more time.
time. Thank you.